In this short five minute video, we're going to sketch our spoons. I'm gonna show you a quick and easy way to get a rather proportionate spoon onto your paper. First, let's look at composition. We could put all of the spoons uh, facing one direction, or maybe we wanna go ahead and put them in different directions. So let's take the middle one and face it up. Next, we'll take our pencil and we'll go ahead and trace around the spoon. If we have the spoon facing up, it's going to be harder to get it accurate. So if you actually face it down, it's easier to get a pretty accurate tracing around the spoon. I'm gonna go around each spoon, kind of speed up the video here so you guys can get to your drawings. Do the first one, just has a nice point on the end of it. Make a few corrections. It won't be perfect the first time. So you may have to go in, make some parts skinnier and even fatten up some different areas and straighten them out. And lastly, our copper spoon. Next, we're gonna put the spoons back over the drawing and we're gonna add in where the shadows are seen. My light source is above, so the shadows are gonna cast down and out. This will add some realism to the picture. Please note that at this point, I have the spoons facing upward and not downward like we did initially when we were doing our tracing. Some of the spoons have two different shadows. They have a heavy shadow, which is a primary shadow, and then they have a secondary shadow um, that's a little bit lighter that you can see on the white paper. Now that we've finished putting our shadows on our drawing, we're gonna get ready to look at where we see highlights. Um, I have several lights in my studio coming from above, uh, so you can see them on uh, each individual spoon. Uh, there's some real distinct highlights. What I'm showing you here is the reference photo that I've printed out. Uh, this isn't actually the spoons on the surface. Um, so I have my incredible white mask liquid frisket. I love this stuff because I think uh, it's the only stuff that I've seen I could leave on for about a week. I can come back and it'll still easily come off my painting using the rubber cement pickup. Uh, you can also use your fingers, but it's not recommended as the oil from your hands and skin will transfer onto the paper. I'm using a silicone nib to add the highlights onto the drawing. I have gone over a few spots already and I'm just adding a little bit more. I'm gonna wait until this completely dries before I begin my initial layers of paint. If I wanna do real thin lines, I'll get my scrubbing tool. You can also use a credit card as well. Put a little bit of the masking fluid on it and you can draw very thin lines with the masking fluid. Some artists will use that trick to do very thin pieces of hair if they're doing portrait work. So that's one of the things about this particular scrubber that I just love because it's got that nice edge on the back side of it. You never want to use one of your paint brushes to apply masking fluid. It will never come off. And the other thing I recommend is to not put the masking fluid uh, applicator into your bucket of water. I just peel it off with my fingers or I'll clean it off on a um, paper towel. Just take a paper towel and comes right off and there you have it, but you don't want that floating in your water.